Thank you very much for your time. Let's start with what we see in Georgia, you know, going on in Georgia. We see tens of thousands of people taking streets. Uh, but we got to this point gradually. We saw the Georgian government take several steps. Would it be not fully siding uh, with, you know, with Ukraine, uh, blaming the West for trying to get Georgia involved in the war? Uh, so when we talk about Georgia right now, uh, do we know where the Georgian government stands? Let's start with that. Well, uh, thanks, honey. A pleasure to be here. What we're talking about is that Georgia has said it wants to join the EU and have a relationship in transatlantic organizations such as NATO. So in that context, we have discussions that we might not have with other countries. So the government has said it wants to have free and fair elections and will invite in international observers. That's a, something that involves us naturally because it's part of joining the club that we're a part of in the case of NATO and we strongly support in the case of the EU. And in that context, to, to begin to put special and we think discriminatory requirements on the organizations that are coming in to do things the Georgian government wants, like observe and help promote free and fair elections, we think is problematic. Has the Georgian government made a choice uh, to be with Kremlin? Does that seem evident to you at this point? Is this about the Russian law or the Russia, pro-Russian regime? What we know is that 80% of Georgians want to be in the EU, and we strongly support that aspiration. Mm -hmm. The law, I think, is just a, an issue of going too far in trying to restrict what is normal in Europe and in the transatlantic space. And so it's a conversation back and forth. It's unfortunate that a lot of this plays out on what used to be Twitter. I mean, this is really about a government that has pledged itself to enter a process of working with other governments, including the United States. Is that pledge still, uh, still there? Well, that's what we've said. We, we would like to work with them. When the EU senior representative, Mr. Kopman, was there yesterday, he said, we'd want to work with you on this law. We had said, come to Washington, work with us on this law. And it's turned into a sort of odd bit of public um, assertions of strength. And I really think this is about how governments talk to each other when they're trying to join the same club. I understand you're trying to not to answer my question directly, but um, I'm, I'm going to repeat that again. Is this about Russian law at this point, or is this about Georgian Dream having made a choice, choice not to be part of the West uh, or you know, abandoning its uh, people's declared Europe? Well, I think I am answering what I can answer. Yes. What, what I know is on the table right now is this Russian-based foreign agent yes. law. And we and the EU have said it's important to bring this in line with European standards so that uh, the organizations can do what the government has said they want done. And that we want to do together. Now, as far as what Georgian Dream does for its choice, that's up to them. And in this regard, I note um, we saw uh, you know, a prominent, the founder of Georgian Dream speak the other day. Uh, I was a little surprised at how ill-informed he seemed to be. Um, he's not under sanctions by the West. He seems to think he is. And I'd hope that he could find other sources of information, maybe talk to people who understand the West and who have been truthful with him in the past. We'd really like to see that kind of conversation because it's a shame to have such an influential person seem to be operating on the basis of some misinformation. Uh, that was one of my questions and you almost answered it, but do you think, I mean, he's been making these statements for over 12 years. I think he had uh, 12 years to gather information. So he has blamed you for, you know, 2008 war, war in Ukraine, as well as you know, repeated somewhat the statements we've seen from, you know, Vladimir Putin and uh, Maria Zakharova about the color revolutions that you were behind it. On top of that, today, uh, the uh, prime minister accused you of trying to organize the re revolution in Georgia. How do you reply to that? Well, I just reply that it's false. Like, we haven't fomented any of these accused revolutions. And in Georgia especially, we see, again, more than 80% of the people want to be part of the EU. 
that's nothing to do with us except that we support that aspiration. These are activities that the people want to see. And so the question is, is the government trying to get a different people or is it going to follow the desires of its people? But that's a thing within Georgia. The idea that a U.S. diplomat was involved, I have no idea what they're talking about. I really wish they could explain it and just stop saying things like that. And we, we hear a lot of words of support uh, to, you know, and criticism towards the government for you know ill treatment of the of, of the protesters uh, but we don't see any measures taken uh, what are the measures you are going to take if you don't see uh, this law taken back well I think the first thing is sort of what you are trying to do with your questions that is to clarify what's at stake Georgia said last fall it wants to join the EU and we were very pleased when the EU made the decision to, to declare Georgia a candidate. That took a lot of work by the government. What's at stake, the measures you're asking about, are that that's not going to be possible if the government decides it wants to go off and just start um, implementing Russian-based laws. So that's really there. If we clarify this, and if that's what the government says, is we don't want to be in the EU, we want to do this other thing, then we'll have very different conversations about what's possible. What we hope and what we want to see is what we saw with Mr. Kopman yesterday, that they will begin to talk to us about how to bring this idea, this law, into conformity with European standards. That's what we're I'm asking. I'm going to follow up on that. You see uh, the statements that say that the West is trying to get Georgia in the war. You see the criticism towards uh, towards Ukraine. You see that you are being blamed for 2008 war. Uh, you are accused of uh, you know being behind the revolutions. You said that the Georgia government did a lot of work for the candidate status. However, we did not see that, for example, the oligarchization has uh, taken place in Georgia. Uh, to finish, all these indicators, uh, does that not tell you What's, do, do you think that's not a choice of the Georgian government? Do you still see um, a future cooperation with, with the current Georgian government? I think there are two important things. One is Russia is bringing Georgia into its invasion of Ukraine, starting to build a giant military port in the territory that it occupies. It's continuing to seize and at times kill Georgian citizens, mm -hmm. um, continuing to occupy territory. So, and it is, um, was for a time attempting to move military items, you know, goods that would be used to produce the military um, uh, munitions through Georgia. And the Georgian government made the very wise decision to try to stop all that as best it could. And it's done a pretty good job. So that was Russia trying to bring Georgia into that war. What's in front of us right now is that Georgia said it wanted to join the EU. It's the start of a process. We're just a, a day or two after the 20th anniversary when 10 countries joined the European Union. It took them on average 10 to 11 years to go through the process. And so they started in some cases from very similar places. So you don't judge the end result by where they are at the start. It's by their willingness to go through the process and work collaboratively. And that's really all that's at issue right now. Let me rephrase, because you are still not answering my question. Let me rephrase it. I understand the diplomatic part of this. But the question is, uh, what else will it take to try to play, you know, to try to balance this out? But like, what else would it take for you to consider the Georgian government being on the side of Kremlin? What we've said is there's still time to work collaboratively on this law to do the thing that the Georgian people and the government together want. So failing to do that, we take a look. But we're not there yet. We're still at a point where we can work together collaboratively. Okay. And one more question. We saw, I mean, we saw the statement from the Prime Minister towards your colleague, Derek Scholle, uh, that included uh, uh, what reminded to some somewhat uh, you know, a Soviet approach. We saw the Soviet Union often point out certain things going wrong in the United States. And the Prime Minister said, I'm going to quote, I have not expressed concerns, concerns with uh, Mr. Scholle about the brutal crackdown of student protest rally in New York City. Yeah. How would you reply to that? It's good of him to mention a thing he didn't mention. But I, I, I think what I take from that is we have a shared concern 
that protests be managed responsibly, peaceful protests be allowed. And so I hope that that's the approach the Georgian government takes, because again, those are the standards we hold ourselves to, and Georgia is asking to join the clubs we support. That's where this conversation begins. When you talk to the European partners, because you, you impose sanctions uh, you know, in Georgia against Mr. Partsaladze, however, we do not see Europeans take the same actions. Are you acting in concert with the European allies on the question of Georgia? Um, yes, and we have different tools that work in different ways. So the European Union is looking at uh, dispersing a fairly large amount of money at the start of the candidacy process. That would go away, but that's their tool. Our tools are different and we'll use them when it's appropriate. But again, we're not there right now. We're at a stage of um, kind of learning how to work together in this new environment where Georgia has said it wants to join these clubs. And so that's what we're trying to work through right now. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, I appreciate it.